All right, here we go. Let's get started with some oops lists. So a list, how do we create a list? Uh, with, brackets. with brackets. Is this a legit way to ha create a list? Yes. Yes. How many elements are in this list? Zero. Yes. It's empty, totally nothing. Um, is this legit? I don't think so. Nick, what do you think? Micah, Micah's shaking his head. Why do you think, are you just guessing because Josh said no? You're hedging your bets. Yeah. It is legit, you can add lists together. So if we have list one is one, oops, oh, is one, list two is two, and list Three is list one plus list two. So this is not going to be three. This is going. <laughs> Mrs. Delta didn't catch a mistake. <laughs> or you were testing us. I did. Yeah, none of you did. All of you just, well, get out of here. So instead of adding two and two together, it, it concatenates the list. Just like with strings. I can't add, I can't get that. I can't add an integer to a string, but I can add, I'm gonna get what number? 56. I'm concatenating the strings together. Same thing with lists. I can concatenate lists together. Um, so if I do, oh, this is a very helpful command. What is the easiest way for me to create a list of every even number from 0 to 100? How do we know? So we know, what does range do? It counts everything. Right, we can get a, so we can get a number. We can get a, a set of numbers that are the odd, or that are the even numbers from 0 to 100, correct? Mm -hmm. So how do we do that, Matthew? Do what? How do we do the range? Um, you do uh, range. Uh, one to 101, zero to 101, and then two. Yep, so that's gonna give me a range of numbers. Now I don't wanna go to zero, zero comma two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, that's, that's a waste of time. So what you can do is you can use this list function. Notice it turns purple. Anything that changes color is a command in Python that you can't use for something else. So I can't have, I shouldn't have sum be the name of a variable. I shouldn't have max, I shouldn't have min, oops. I shouldn't have and or nor, and they change, I shouldn't have class, I shouldn't have define. If they change colors, don't use it. So this list, that tells me it's a built-in function like print and so what that means is what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw range in there and that will actually make a list out of whatever's in here so if I want a list of the letters in your name I would do list and I would do your name and then it makes every thing in there a list Basically what it does is if we did list one is blank and we did for at for ch in range of 0 dot 101 comma 2 we want list one dot append ch it does the same thing but it's a lot simpler just to have the list command but this is exactly what it's doing it the thing in here has to be iterable. And what iterable means is that, essentially the easiest way to think of it is, can it go here in a for loop? Right, I can't go for x in 10 print x. It's saying that this int object, this guy right here is not iterable. In, in the number 10, what is in number 10? 
Just 10. Can I break 10 into anything? Not really. One and a zero. One and a zero, but that chain, that's like, that's if it's a string, I can break it up. But if it's a number, I can't. I can't change, there's nothing that goes into 10 that I can do without breaking it apart. I can break it into a one or a zero, but that is no, it's no longer 10 at that point. It's a one and a zero. Whereas if I do, if I do this, well, that is a string made up of characters and those individual characters are their own thing. So that's okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you guys have questions on that? No? Okay. So this list command will shorten up a lot of things for you. Um, in this list, right, so list one, let's say I wanted to print just the number two. How would I pick that? List one. Nick? List one bracket one. Yep, and what is this called right here? Index. Index, yes. So an index is the location uh, of a number, of an element in a list. You can also do it with a string. So if I did, what letter will be displayed? Uh, yep. <laughs> now, but that's the third number. Why, do you remember why it's? Yes, lists and indexes, lists and strings start at zero. So, how, if I wanted to pick a random letter out of here, or a random number, what are some couple different ways we could do that? Random, random uh, we could do random.choice, so we could do list one. We could do import random. I have a I have a band-aid on my finger. Import random random dot choice and we could put list one in here. That's gonna give us thirty-six. Totally one way to do it. We could also do uh, we could do list one bracket random dot rand int from zero to the length of list one. That would also give us something. Um, we could do list dot pop. This is one we didn't go over. And what that does, list dot one or list dot pop. Where'd a hundred go? It randomly selects one and then deletes it. So if you have, say, a deck of cards and you want a deck and you want one card to be taken out of the deck, I could do, you know, hand is list.pop and then hand two is list.pop. Wow, this band is really messing me up. No, it's not the band. So hand is 98, hand two. Why is it going, hang on, why is it just going to the very end? Did they change something? Because it should be, hmm, they must have updated something. Because it used to randomly pick one. Um, give me one second. Methods, index, append, insert, remove, sort, what? Hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I lied. It removes and returns the last value. The last value. Oh, I I would have sworn it was a random value. Um. Probably there's probably parameter, but I I don't know them because it just I only ever used it for. Why don't, you, why don't you one of you guys look that up? Are there parameters we can give to pop real quick? What you can also do, you guys remember short sort, right? Yeah. What do you think that does? Is this alphabetical? Mm-hmm, or chronological. Yeah. 
Okay, well, apparently you can't shuffle them anymore either. Maybe you can never shuffle them. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. Alright. Um, what's another way to display the last index of a list? Yes, yeah, so if I wanted to print, there's two way, what two, one's easy, the other one's hard. Not hard, but list one bracket negative one, like Nick said, will give us 94. We can also do list one bracket the length of list one minus one, and that gives us the same thing. Why do I have to add this minus one, Matthew? Because it's always going to start at zero, so you want it to be. Yes, if I have, say I have 94 numbers, if I have zero from 94, how many numbers is that? Yeah, because one to 94 would be 94 character, 94 numbers, but you have to add zero. So if I just had length of list one in here, it'd be index of 95. What error do we get when you go when you do a uh, when you do an index that doesn't exist in the list? Yeah. That's the yes. That's the but there's a more general term. It's a blank error. It's index error. When we do exceptions, this is what you'll need to know. Is the name of the error, because um, that, or you can do accept any error. So in the addition that anything goes wrong with this line of code, do this. Um, Sublists, do you guys need me to go, what if I just wanted these four numbers, these three numbers? You would specify the range of numbers to. So I would do list one, how do I specify a range? Or how do I specify a subset or a sublist? Or how do I splice or slice a list? That was a lot of questions in one uh, question. Say you want to splice like the first four numbers, you could go from zero, colon, colon, five. Yes. This is the important thing. This colon is what determines that this is a subset of this list. This is the start number, zero. And just like our range, the last number, it goes from, if this is A to B, it will display A to B minus one index. So that's gonna give us one, two, three, zero, two, four, six, eight, and that is zero, one, two, three, four. It doesn't give us the fifth index, or the, yeah, the fifth index. Okay. What's going to change now if I got rid of the zero? Nothing. If you don't specify the start or the end, it starts at the beginning or goes to the end. So if we do this again with, let's say we start at five and we don't display the end, it's going to display from the fifth index, zero, one, two, three, four, which is the fifth all the way to the very end. What's going to happen now? It's a subset of the list that is the entire list. This is one way to, now this is a, a confusing thing. So list one, let's do list two equals list one. So list one is this, list two is that. Same thing, correct? Now if I do list one dot pop, what number is going to pop up here? 94. 94. And list one should not have 94, and it's correct. It does not have 94. What should list two have? Should list two have 94 or not have 94? Not, not. Why do you say not, Micah? Because it's list one. Because they're more like joined at the hip, which is one. list two equals. Yes, what it does is they both reference the same list. So it's like me calling Nick, Nick or Nicholas. Are they two, but they're two different names, but they refer to the same person. So how, so if you don't want that to happen, how, until we learn the module, um, what you do is you do list two equals list one bracket, like that, and now list one, 
list two are the same, but if I do list one dot pop, dot pop. I know. <laughs> Even though it's on this finger, and I use I use the, the right hand ring finger for that. So list one should look different. It only goes up to 90 now. List two will still go up to 92 because I have made two distinct separate lists at that point. And until we learn copy and deep copy, that's how you should, if you want a copy of a list to then change, you know, change one but not the other, this is how you should do it. Um, you guys know how to get the length of a list? Yeah, so L E N list one. All right, so there's 46 numbers in there. Changing values, so let's say I want this to be 100 for whatever reason. How do I do that, Matthew? 1400, zero. Yeah, of list one. Um, so you know that index is zero? Yep. So list one, zero. And then don't you use the command like... Um... Are you tired? Yeah. Okay. I can't remember. You want some monster? No, I'm kidding. Um, you're thinking of, you can just do this. And whatever, I'm rewriting the index zero to be 100. I don't have to do anything else and nothing fancy. What if I want to add a thousand, the number a thousand to the very end? What's the easiest way to do that? Yep. So append will always add to the end. And the easy way to think of that is, and I like writing this on the board because I can. So if I have A, P, P, E, N, D, what two words make append? App and app plus end. So you're adding to the end. And then with these P's, if you just flip them upside down, you get add end. Why would you call it add end? I don't know. Because no, add end isn't a word. It would be add a den. It would be a den. No. P. What are the times if you reflect it, it and it's a word? Wait, hang on. That's a D. Look at no, but if you like rotated it, it'd be a D. That's a word. Yeah, if you rotate it, it'll be a D. But if you flip it, if you reflect it over that exact word. Okay, stop going to that. Oh, yeah. So if you do. Yeah, but we're not doing that. We're we're we're, we're doing both. We're we're, we're we're rotating it around the x-axis, and we're rotating it at the y-axis. What do you got here? That what end is, is a word. To addend a number which is added to another. So you can change it. I didn't know. No, I mean no, you can't. Why didn't you show me up, Josh? You want to come teach? Sure. No, Actually, I could make that up. I had one class um, when I had like 12, I think I had in advance for 10 to 12. I had a couple kids teach the debugging lesson. They just spent a day going over the, de the debugger. Uh, list concatenation, we did that, work with list, blah, 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 blah. Okay, using a while loop with a list. You guys want to go over loops and lists? Okay, thank you. I need one of you guys to talk. Um, and the thing is, if we get through lists, maybe we'll make the quiz Thursday morning. Or, wait, Wednesday. Wednesday, the first half, you guys will take it. Next half, we'll get started with the cool stuff. Nice. The try and accept, I think, is really cool. Okay, so, um, for x in list one, print. X. I'm going to get all the numbers. I could do four. What? Okay. So I'm sure you guys can figure this out. What if I want to show the index of each individual item? So, like, index 0 is 100, index 1 is 2. What would I, what would I, how would I have to write this for loop? 
for index in this one? No, that's to be the same thing. I know I asked you, and then I'm, now I'm just doing it, but. Oh, so you get the link? Okay. Now, right, how do I print? You guys understand this yeah. for index in range length the list of one so what's the length of the list of list one yeah so 47 you can also tell because this goes to 46 so length of list one is 47 range of 47 is going to give me which numbers Micah Range of 47. Uh, zero to 46. Correct, 0 to 46. So index is going to be 0 to 46. So the index, and here we have, and as you look, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then all we're doing is we're printing the index of the list. And then we get the actual value. Make sense? Oh, here's a good one. So, let's do a list of names. We're going to go Nick. I should have made that like Dave or something. <laughs> So, just to be funny, um, what's an easy way to determine whether or not something is in a list or not? If you guys have the book, you guys can follow along. I'm just saying. I know it was in the book. Oh, it was just in, right? Yep. Oh, you would just do Dave in names, and that will give you a true or false. To write this in an actual if statement, you would do if. Dave in names print Dave is in the class. He's not, so, so then I could also do else print Dave doesn't exist. I cannot spell this morning. Close enough. Dave D isn't exists. Egg sits. Hmm. So, if I have a list of names and I want to know is someone in my note is someone in this list is this a number in my list is this license plate in my database type thing. Um, Makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can also do Dave not in names. That'll give me true. So again, I could do if Dave is not in. So you could do, you know, I'm just gonna, if user, right, we're gonna see user as a string is gonna be our user input, whatever they've typed in is in names, print that name was found, else, ugh, else name was not found, make sense? So this is really helpful knowing that you can check really, 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 really quickly if something is in a list or not. Because otherwise you'd have to do, you know, for LM in names, if user equal equal LM print uh, name was found else print user not found but then you would have 
user not found. Well, now I have four times of users, so I'll just do, I'd have to get rid of this. And then you gotta, I have no idea where the G came from. But now I have no, but now I'm not telling the user any useful information. So now I gotta go in and be like, okay, well, hang on. I don't want this to happen every single time. I don't want it to say user not found, user not found, user not found. So now I need a variable to keep track of whether or not the thing was found. So let's go. So you guys see what I'm saying? Like using that in function prevents you from having to write a lot of extraneous code. Um, last thing, maybe not. This is actually really useful. This is similar to what happens with classes. So if you understand this, this will make classes easier to understand, which I don't believe are in this book, because um, that's more object-oriented programming, which is used. Um, a, a really good example is in video games. Every gun you've ever used in a video game is part of a class, and it has a determined name, it has a determined size, it has a determined image, it has a, a magazine size, it has a range, it has a damage, it has a effective range, it has a, you know, drop off some games most games don't um, most games don't have a where it actually falls because after I think about I think with a handgun after about 300 feet it's hitting the floor if you aim it straight and you just shoot it, it though, anyway, so. what it probably doesn't matter in the game because you probably couldn't yeah you're probably not going to see 300 meters or 300 yards 300 feet but they did it on Mythbusters they set up a handgun perfectly flat at 90 degrees shot it and they calculated, like, due to this, it's going to go approximately 300 feet. They set a piece of paper, and they looked for the bullet, and it was about 300 feet. So it actually does fall, and uh, most games don't do that. Most games, it's just, if I'm pointing, wherever I'm pointing, that's where the bullet goes. They don't, they don't do drop off. I know Battlefield does, especially with sniper rifles. So you actually have to aim above, and you'll see the bullet go, and arc. Um, Fortnite does that? Mm -hmm. mm. I've I've honestly played Fortnite once and in like two hours I played it, I killed one person. I know. There's, and, there's bots now. And I killed it with the with the pickaxe that you spawned with because he was killing my roommate. And my roommate's fiance at the time was just like running around the house that we were in because we none of us had ever played it before and he was trying to get into it. He's a children's pastor at church. So he was like trying to figure out like what is Fortnite and whatever. So it was hysterical. But anyway, so let's say we have cat is, uh, what is what does the book say? Fat, black, loud. Oh, I thought I put flat. I was like, that's weird. So we could do size is cat bracket or cat index zero. Color is cat bracket one and disposition. Why they picked that word is I don't know, cat two. I could do that, right? And then side, I could have put volume. But what I can do instead of doing that, how many elements are right here? So think, do you think I could go size, color? Disposition equals cat. Nope. Because there's three things here, the computer goes, oh, you have three variables here. This is made up of three things. We're just going to assign them to each one. If you do something like this and you do cat, Can't spell disposition. What if we did what do you think is gonna happen? Too many values to unpack. Meaning it expected three and it has four here. 
it needed three because it had three here and there's four values, four things here. So it freaks out. That's really useful. Um, again, if someone has a name and you need the first letter of the name, I don't know. First initial, second initial, third initial. I don't know. Um, we did that, we did that. Now the last thing um, is the different, uh, we get out of here now. Okay, so we're, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over methods and quiz will be Thursday the first, Wednesday the first half of class. Okay, again, it's gonna be over what we've covered since Wednesday. Um, and then after that, we'll get into try and accept stuff. We should do a group quiz. Like Maybe. Groups of four. Wait, groups of four? Well, then I'll just make it really hard. Do we have community time? Uh, yeah. Have a good one, guys.